Life as We Knew It, Chapter 8, Page 126, July 11th. Mom changed the rule so I can eat brunch on Mondays. She says it isn't fair for me to fast on Sundays and then not eat until Monday night. Of course, she isn't eating until Monday night, but we're not supposed to notice. Fasting wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I got real hungry around lunchtime, but it wore off as the day went along. I guess I'll get used to it. It's hard to be sure, but I think things are getting grayer. Peter dropped by this afternoon. We told him our plans, and he thought they were good ones. He especially approved of boiling the drinking water. I asked him about swimming. It's probably better if you stopped, he said. The people with town water are telling me it's discolored, and there are concerns about how much longer it's going to last. All that takes electricity, and we know how well the power plants are working these days. But what does that have to do with the pond, I asked. It's hard to predict what people will do if they don't have running water, Peter said. They might, might start taking their dirty clothes to the pond to wash them there. Or they might start bathing there. There's a possibility the pond will become a breeding ground. Nowadays, it's better to be safe than sorry. At least he didn't list the symptoms of cholera. That, for Peter, showed real restraint. I think I'll go swimming tomorrow anyway. Maybe Dan will show up. Maybe the sun will shine. July 12th. No Dan. No sun. No electricity. No word from Johnny or Dad. July 13th. Matt stopped running. It took me five days to realize that. I finally asked, and he said he'd stopped on Saturday, partly because he's worried about air quality and partly to conserve strength. The days seem a lot shorter than just a week ago. At least, it's getting darker sooner. Mom lets us use one of the oil lamps in the sunroom every evening. It doesn't cast enough light for all of us to read, so Matt and I take turns sitting near it. Mom found a bag of old yarn in the attic, and she's crocheting at night, so she doesn't need much light. I'm using the flashlight to write this now. I know I should stop. Batteries don't last forever. July 14th. I did something so stupid today, I could kill myself. I'm so angry and upset. We were sitting around this evening doing our let's share the dim light routine. And around 9, Mom announced we'd used up enough oil for one night and we should go to bed. We've been on a sunrise to sunset pattern for a while now. While now. But with that horrible gray covering over the sun, our timing is off. You can still tell if the sun is up, but there are no dramatic changes. Gray at 6 a.m., gray at 6 p.m. And I don't know why, but I just didn't feel like going to bed. Maybe it's the nightmares I've been having the past couple of days. Becky pushing me into a volcano, stuff like that. I said I was going to sit on the porch before going to bed, and since sitting on the porch doesn't use up any energy, Mom had no reason to say no. So I went out onto the porch and sat there for a while, maybe half an hour. Certainly long enough that when I went back in, Mom and Matt were already in their rooms. Only when I decided to go in, I forgot about Horton. Horton goes outside in the daytime, but we're not allowed to let him out any time after sunset. Even when we had electricity, that was the rule. Horton stays in at night. I guess Horton's as confused about what's day and what's night as the rest of us. He raced out as soon as I opened the door. I went back out and called for him, but he wasn't interested. I stayed on the porch for an extra hour, calling for him and hoping he'd come back on his own, but there's no sign of him. I'd better not use up any more flashlight battery. I just hope he's on the doorstep complaining about being forced to spend the night outside when I get up tomorrow. July 15. No Horton. I alternated between gathering kindling and looking for him. Mom and Matt searched also, but none of us saw him. Mom says I shouldn't feel bad, but it could have happened with any of us. But I know it's my fault. I am so careless. I've always gotten into trouble because I'm careless. But most of the time I've only hurt myself. I don't know what Johnny will do if he gets home and Horton isn't back. July 16. Still no sign of Horton. Mom and I had a big fight. We haven't heard a word from Johnny in two weeks, and all you can think of, all you can think of us, we haven't heard a word from Johnny in two weeks, and all you can think of is that damn cat. Johnny's fine, I yelled right back at her. Johnny's eating three meals a day. You waited until he left before you put us on our starvation diets. You think I didn't notice that? You think I didn't know which one of us you're betting on? I still don't believe I said that. 
The thoughts crossed my mind, but I haven't even written it in here. It's so terrible. Horrible. What if mom truly believes only one of us is likely to make it? I know she wouldn't choose herself, but would she really pick between Matt and Johnny and me? Will a point come where she asks two of us to give our food to the third? The thing is, I know if it comes to that, Matt wouldn't take the food. And mom's got to know that also. And when I do think about this, and I try so hard not to, I think mom guesses I couldn't make it on my own, that no female could, which leaves Johnny. I hate thinking like this. I hate myself for being so upset about Horton that I took it out on mom. I hate being so selfish that it never even occurred to me mom was worried about not hearing from Johnny. I've stopped worrying about not hearing from dad. I just imagine a month away from here, from mom, a month in Springfield where for some reason the sun shines brightly and the electricity works all the time and I'm never hungry. July 17. Three days and none of us have caught a glimpse of Horton. Even Mrs. Nesbitt's been looking since Horton sometimes wanders down to her house. She thought maybe she saw him yesterday, but she isn't sure. And Matt says we shouldn't assume she really did. People see what they want to see, he said. Mom and I haven't talked since our horrible fight yesterday, which makes supper time even more fun. After supper, I go searching for Horton until it's too dark to see anything, let alone a gray tabby. Then I sit on the porch and will him to come home. Matt came out to the porch. Horton might show up tonight, he said, but we'd better start dealing with the possibility he isn't coming back. I think he's going to, I said. I think he just went searching for Johnny. When he gets hungry enough, he'll come back. It isn't like anyone else is going to feed him. Even in the gloomy darkness, I could see Matt's expression. I've gotten to know it so well lately. It's that, how am I going to tell her this one, look. You know, we're in pretty good shape, he said. Compared to a lot of other people, we're doing fine. That's how he does it. He kind of slides into it, breaks it to me gently, points out how fabulous our life is before he sticks the knife in. Just say it, I demanded. It's possible Horton's been killed, Matt said, for food. I thought I was going to be sick. I don't know why that hadn't occurred to me. Maybe because until a couple months ago, I didn't live in a world where pets were regarded as food. Look, Matt said, we've all let Horton out. If someone wanted to catch him for whatever reason, they'd have plenty of chances. All you did was let him out at night. You're not at fault. No one is. But I am, and he knows it, and Mom knows it, and Johnny will know it, and most of all, I know it. If Horton's dead, if he's been killed, I'm the one responsible. I really don't deserve to live, not because of Horton, but if there's only so much food left, I haven't done anything to earn it. What do I do? Gather kindling? What kind of contribution is that? I hate Sundays. Everything is worse on Sundays. July 18th, Monday. I stayed out all day, searching and gathering kindling. I fell asleep in the woods in this afternoon, just collapsed into sleep. The mosquitoes must have loved me. I have a half dozen bites I don't remember from this morning. I got in around four and Mom was waiting for me in the kitchen. Did you eat today, she asked. I didn't see you come in and eat. I skipped brunch, I said. I forgot about it. You don't just forget about food, she said. You fasted yesterday. Today you eat. Those are the rules. You sure do like making up rules, I said. You think I like this, Mom yelled. You think I like seeing my children go hungry? You think I'm getting any pleasure from all this? Of course I don't, and I should have apologized on the spot and hugged Mom and told her how much I love her and how brave she's being and how I wish I could be just like her. Instead, I ran to my room and slammed the door behind me, just like I was 12 again. It's going to be supper time soon, and I know if I don't go out, Matt's going to drag me out. Even if he doesn't use actual force, he'll drag me out with guilt. The funny thing is, I just as soon not eat. It turns out if you don't eat for a long time... The idea of food becomes nauseating. That's probably how Megan's been doing it. Only she thinks going hungry is good, and I know it sucks. Supper time's going to be so much fun.